today's the day I usually talk about programming. You guys remember I told you I didn't learn to program until I've been in the field eight years. The reason it took me so long is because for eight years, I kept trying and giving up. Like I'd get a book, I'd read the first two chapters and I'd give up. I'd take a class, I'd drop out of the class. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to explain. It was just so hard for me. I don't know, man. I couldn't wrap my head around this freaking programming thing. I started in the field in 2003. So in 2005, I read this book called Absolute Beginner's Guide to C. Now, this is the book that changed my life. Now, bear in mind, I had taken a, a C programming class at the local community college, and I got an F. Like, I took C, and I got an F. I got a 42%. Like, I wasn't even close to a D. I felt that joker so bad, <laughs> right? Mm, sure. Then I got um, uh, C Programming for Dummies. I got the For Dummies book and I was even more confused. I gave up and like a year later, I was in the bookstore and I saw this book on the clearance rack for $2. I was like, man, screw it. I, I got the book and the book was so helpful. Like somebody just put it in English all of a sudden. So like, who can tell me what's an array? Look what he says. It's a data structure which can store a fixed size collection of elements in the same data type, right? In his book, he'll be like, an array is like your lunchbox. Here's your lunchbox. And in your lunchbox, let's say you got your drink, you got your sandwich, and you got your chips. And then you gave every one of them a number. So there's a one, there's a two, there's a three. And he was like, hey man, give me a number two out of my lunchbox. He's like, that's what an array is. It's a container for items that you want to use later on. And everything that you throw in the container, you give it a number. And I don't know why, like that just changed everything for me, right? Like he just explained everything that way. If I built a grocery list, right, and I want bread, you know, eggs, milk, cheese, lunch meat, that's an array. If I want the first element in the array, I just ask for it by number. Make sense, guys? The cool thing about that book, what it did for me, was it just gave me a way to put a mental picture in my mind of what these programming things are. I couldn't program, but I finally was like, oh, that's a for loop. Okay, that's a string. That's an integer, you, you, you know what I mean? I needed that kind of basics and everything was an analogy. Everything was like, you're at a picnic, you're at a beach, you're at a park, you, you know? Yeah, it just gave me a way. Now, like I said, at the end of the book, to this day, it's the only programming book in my life that I have read and did every single exercise from cover to cover, before or since. I've never read any other book and did every exercise in it cover to cover like I did with that book. But it gave me a way in my mind to go, oh, this is what this is. So then when did it change for me? So then a few years later, I kind of gave up again because like I could, I could look at code I could know what it is, but I couldn't really figure out what it was doing. I don't know if that makes sense. Like if you read French, the words are close enough to English that you can read and pronounce the word. You just don't know what they mean. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, got it. That's what I was doing with programming. Like at that point, I could know that's a for loop, but like what it's doing and why, eh, didn't know. So a couple of years later, they came out with this thing called YouTube. And then there's this kid on YouTube that is exactly what you would tell your daughter not to marry. 
The kid's name is The New Boston. And you guys notice that as I type The New Boston, all these languages come up. You see that? The boy went to college. He went to NC State. And he dropped out of college because he felt like he wasn't learning enough and he decided to make YouTube videos until I had that realization. Look how many subscribers this guy has. Yeah, now I'll be telling my boy, my daughter, listen, honey, you better get that boy some coffee. You, you know what I mean? Make sure that boy stays awake to keep making videos, right? The reason I like this so much is like, he does every programming language under the sun and he does them in like 30 videos per language. And all the videos are like five, six minutes long. When I decide like I want to learn a language, like let's say you want to learn JavaScript, you'll see that his tutorial is 40 JavaScript videos. But if you jump down here and actually look, they're all five, six minutes, right? Well, what I like about all of his videos is in his videos, he literally has no PowerPoint. And you literally just open up an interpreter or open up Notepad and you type what you see him typing. And he just talks you through it. What I started to realize was like, all I need to do is three videos a night, three nights a week. That's 15 minutes. Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, I do three videos. So that's 15 minutes. Now, at that pace, I could do one language a month. I could do Python this month, Java next month, you know? Now, what's crazy is by the end of your third month, you will be able to read code. By the end of your sixth month, you'll be able to write code. And that got me an additional $30,000 a year. And the reason is because in the security space, the people who can actually program, it's so much smaller. The secret to learning to program for me has been YouTube. Three videos a night, three nights a week. And you can pick any language you want. I recommend starting with Python. So you can do any language you want. And then in a couple of months, you would be surprised that you're walking and you're talking with the developers and like, you're like, oh yeah, we have to write a class for that, right? Like all of a sudden it just, it just clicks. So it took me a while before I finally realized, like I used to think that if I was going to do programming, that that meant I was going to be a programmer. I am not a programmer, but since I know how to program, I can interface with programmers. So what I was starting to say is like, if you look at cyber, the, when you move into the technical space, the people that know network, it's this big. The people that know web app is this big. The people that know mobile app and cloud is this big. And the people that know source code is this big. So the less people that know the technology, what ends up happening to your money? The money goes up because you just, you know how to deal with this and the other people don't. It was surprising to me because like, wait a minute, I'm not building the tools. I'm not writing code every day, but the same way that you as a security person have to go talk to a network admin about the right way to secure routers and switches, the same way you have to go talk to a system administrator on the right way to secure servers and endpoints, is the same way that I have to go talk to a developer about securing source code. You're not as good as the network admin. You're just close to them. You're not as good as the system administrator, but you're close to them. Like you understand how systems work. I'm not as good as the programmer, but I understand how the source code works. As a security person doing the source code stuff, that's what it did for me. And all of a sudden it moved me into a different class of security consultant where I could make a lot more money. Um, because right now, if you think about your current job, uh, just just let your mind kind of go there. What would be the value uh, to your organization if you were a cloud, mobile, and source code security expert? 
right? Like, just kind of think about your shop. How many people in your shop know that stuff? In mine, no. None of them, really. Yeah, I don't think I've ever met a person that knew all three. Yeah, yeah. But you're kind of seeing, like, now you know that's the future of security, right? You know that's the future of security. Now, check this out. Your mobile app, all your mobile apps are is a one website web browser. A mobile app is a web browser like Chrome, Firefox, Edge that communicates with a web service. So the web service, you talk to it via what guys? XML or, or JSON. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have hosts that are in the cloud, let's say those hosts are AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Oracle Cloud, all that stuff. Now to do it programmatically, you write it in Python or whatever your language of choice is. And when you put it on the wire, you send it as JSON. The data that goes to and from it, JSON. Start, stop the virtual machine, resize the virtual machine, delete the virtual machine. All the same things that you would be doing in the cloud, right? So if somebody needs a dynamic infrastructure that can auto scale up, auto scale down virtual machines in the cloud based on workload, right? You realize that all that stuff is gonna be data that's sent via XML or JSON. <laughs> Look what happens once you learn source code.